Welcome to today's tutorial on using formulas and functions. This is going to be focused on sum if, average if, lookups, and concatenating functions. So what we're going to do is head over to the forecast sheet. I have the housing.xlsx file from the instructor webpage open, and uh, hopefully you guys do too. So right now, all of these values in here are hard-coded for uh, so, uh, for columns B through F, and we want to change that. What we're going to do is we're going to enter a formula into cell B6 using the SUMIF function. So I'm going to hit backspace, and I'm going to hit equals. And I'm going to edit up here in the formula bar. I'm going to start typing sum if, and this will pop up. So our range is going to be from the home sheet. And normally I would just select it. However, I need this range to be absolute, absolute column, absolute row. So I need to enter this information in manually. So I need to put dollar sign $B, dollar sign $4, now that I've got the home sheet selected. So dollar sign $B, dollar sign $4, colon, dollar sign $B, dollar sign 54 and then the next thing I'm going to grab is A6. This is going to be a column absolute row relative reference right here because I have the dollar sign in front of the row, in front of the column, I'm sorry. And I'm going to say column, or comma, dollar sign A. Six comma and right here we have the home sheet as well so we'll click on that and we're going to be doing a absolute row relative column reference right here because I have the dollar sign in front of the row numbers so we're going to click on the home sheet right there and it's going to be C dollar sign four colon C dollar sign fifty four and I'm going to close out the parentheses on that one and I'm going to hit enter so now we're going to autofill B6 through F14. So we first go across, and then we're going to go all the way down. Now you won't see any difference right here in terms of the numbers that are displayed for the totals or their effect on any of these values over here. But if you look in each of these cells, you can see that there's a formula there where once there was a hard-coded number. So that's it for the... The next thing we're going to do is use the average if function. And we're going to head over to the forecast sheet in cell H6. So right now, again, we have a hard-coded value. We're going to replace this with the average if formula. So we're going to go equals, and then typing over here in the formula bar, average. If you just start typing that, you'll see average if come up in the suggestion. So I'm going to click on that. And just like with before, we need to grab 
information from the home values sheet and it needs to be a absolute uh, row absolute column reference for this particular uh, piece of criteria. So we're going to have to enter it in manually. So we're going to click on the home value sheet and we need dollar sign B dollar sign 4 all the way over to dollar sign B dollar sign 54. So dollar sign B dollar sign 4 colon dollar sign B dollar sign 54. Then our criteria that this average if is going to look for is going to be dollar sign A 6. So dollar sign A and then regular 6. So that's going to be an absolute column reference. The range is going to be from the home value sheet as well and it's going to be dollar sign G dollar sign 4 to dollar sign G dollar sign 54. And I'm just entering that in right now. Make sure you have colons in between your uh, first and last cells in the cell references. And we're going to multiply this entire average if after we put a parenthesis around that by one point zero one eight and we're going to use the caret which is done by holding shift and hitting six on Windows and we're going to make it to the power of ten that caret is an exponent so when I hit enter, again, you won't see any difference in these actual values, but now we have a formula that we can autofill all the way down. And that's it for that step. For step four, we're going to use a VLOOKUP function. So we're going to head over to the total value sheet, and we're going to look up information from the home value sheet. So we're going to look up whether uh, things were high, low, moderate uh, based on housing prices. So we're going to go to the total value sheet. We're going to head over to H4 in the total value sh sheet and we're going to use the VLOOKUP function by heading over to the insert function button. If you don't see it right here in the recently used ones, you can just type V for the search and there's VLOOKUP at the very bottom right there. So our lookup value, that first one is going to be A4. So we're just going to type in A4. It doesn't matter whether it's capitalized or lowercase. For the table array, we're going to grab from the home value sheet. And the data that we're going to be using from the sheet is from A4 to L54. So those are going to be absolute references. So we need dollar signs in front of the A and the 4. And then we'll put them in front of the L and the 54 as well. And the column index that we're going to be using is number 12. So it'll be the 12th column heading to the right in the home values table. So we're going to click OK. And now we have the home pricing. 
uh, designation, low, moderate, or high. If it didn't autofill for you all the way down, go ahead and do that now. So for our next step, we're going to head over to the home value sheet and we're going to use the future value function. So we're going to head over to column I and cell 4 in column I and we're going to use the insert function button and if future value or FV is not in your recently used functions you're going to type it right there FV in the search double click on FV the rate that we're going to be using is 4.41% so expressed as a decimal that is 0 0.0 Four four one. The uh, number of payment periods is going to be 40, which is found in your instructions right here. So for 40 years, the present value is going to be the 1970 median home value, and we want to display the result as a positive number. So the payments we're going to assume are zero for right now because we're just trying to determine the future value. And the present value is found by selecting the 1970 value right there. So we're doing it for the same row, the same state right there, which is Alabama in this case. And if we click OK, we see negative values for all of these uh, inflation adjustment adjusted results here. So there's an easy fix to this. We can actually just go to our formula bar up here and right before the bracket in the blue uh, 1970 reference right there to our Alabama value, our 1970 home value, we're just going to put a minus sign in front of that and hit enter. And it should do it for all the rest of your values. The other way you could do it would be to multiply the entire thing by negative one and that'll give you positive values as well. Our next stop is to use the concatenate function in the total value sheet. We're going to head over to column K, row four, right below where it says state region and we're going to use the function button. So insert the function. For the brief description, we're going to type in concat and we're going to select concatenate. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a text string combining the state and region names in this format. So what each of these blocks will do is give you a piece of the entire string or uh, sentence that's going to be put in what uh, whatever cell you're using this function in. So the first thing that we need is the state name. Next, we're going to open up parentheses, put a space, and then open up a set of parentheses right there and close out those quotes. Then we're going to get the region for the same state. And then in the fourth block right here, we're going to, in quotes, put the parentheses uh, that closes this off in between quotes. And we're going to click OK. And that's what we were looking to display. So the last thing to do is to do the analysis question starting in row two of the analysis question sheet.